Hello Fast Trackers, my name is Rahul Ghazni, Director of Fast Track Training and today we're going to be looking at safeguarding, specifically safeguarding of children and vulnerable adults, everything that you need to know for the exam uh, if your taxi badge has a safeguarding uh, aspect to it. So what we're going to cover is all aspects of safeguarding, we're going to also be talking about what is safeguarding what are the key terminologies they're going to use and what you need to do in your test to get the best answers to pass the exam. So without further ado, let's get started. Right. Hello Fast Trackers, now we're going to start with safeguarding vulnerable passengers and working in partnership with the police. So today, the, the learning outcomes for today is, is that at the end of this session you will understand the need of protecting vulnerable adults and young people and children why it's important, identify possible victims of abuse and exploitation by understanding what are the indicators of risk, what you need to be looking out for, identifying the source, uh, sources of advice and pathways for reporting these uh, concerns to people, and understanding the roles and responsibilities in relation to the personal safety and security of vulnerable passengers. Vulnerable passengers is really, really important um, because criminals and, and this is something in our classrooms we discuss as to what makes a vulnerable person what are you doing as a driver if you're a taxi driver and you get a person sitting in your car and you're taking them somewhere else and they're getting out and they're going into someone's house and when you when they're in someone's house they're being abused you've taken them on that journey and if you are not paying attention you could allow that to continuously happen your job is to report it, to see it, to understand the risks and report it. That's what the police are expecting you to do. It's called whistleblowing. And to whistleblow, you need to understand the risks and the factors. Let's look at the first scenario. You are working in the city centre and often pick up passengers from pubs and clubs. You notice that there are often high numbers of young people who appear to be drunk and underage coming out of a particular nightclub at weekends. On this occasion, when you arrive to pick up your passenger, you see a young girl leaving the premises. The girl seems to be about 14 or 15 years old and is very intoxicated. She is with three significantly older men and the group is walking towards your vehicle. What do you do? The best thing is to report it to the police or to ask the girl if she needs help. So you're asking permission and you're reporting it. Don't get involved. Don't refuse to take them. Don't tell them, uh, you know, uh, get, get confront them. That's not your job. You're not professionally trained to confront the people. That's the police's job. And you never know this girl. This could be her uncles or it could be her family members. Um, but still, she's young and she's drunk. So you do need to report it. These are the ideas you need to be going through. Okay, scenario number two. You are aware that one of your colleagues regularly picks up a 14-year-old girl from a children's home and takes her to a local hotel. What would you do or what should you do? Um, again, do not confront the, the uh, taxi driver or your colleague. Instead, tell the police or tell MASH, Multiple Agency Safeguarding Hub. If you know that there's a 14-year-old girl that is going to a local hotel, uh, very much alarm bells should be ringing for you. You should safeguard that child. That is your responsibility as a professional. Scenario number three, an elderly lady approaches your taxi at the local supermarket. She has a lot of luggage with her and a walking stick. She appears to be in pain when she walks. What would you do? One of my students said call an ambulance. Uh, not, not quite, but it's a good idea if you want to call an ambulance if she looks to be in pain, okay? But your responsibility is to go, get her luggage, uh, pick it up, put it in the boot, open the door for a letter into the car, close the door, take it to a destination, then take the luggage out of the car and take it to the front door and open the door for a letter out. Do not go inside her house. If you take the, if she requests, please take the luggage in my, in, into her house, you reply, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to go inside the house. Why? You don't know what's in the house. You could go into the house and she could start screaming. You could take it in the house, somebody could be in there. Leave it outside the house, go back to your taxi, carry on your work, okay? You collect a man and a woman from a local restaurant. 
When they get into your vehicle, the man is shouting at the woman who is crying. During the journey to their home address, the man slaps the woman across the face. What would you do? Um, again, ask permission. You do not get involved. Some of my students would say, oh, we're, just, we're, gonna, we're gonna lock the door, we're gonna take them to the police station, or we're gonna stop the car and tell the man to get out. No, you ask permission. You say to the woman, excuse me, do you need help? And she could say, no, thank you, I'm okay. Do not get involved, but definitely take a description. What clothes are they wearing? What are they doing? When you pick them up, where you pick them up, where you drop them off, what happened? and then report it to the police and let the police go and investigate. You are not the investigator, you're a taxi driver, a professional. They are professional investigators. Okay, that's, the, that's what today's presentation is about. What is your responsibility? Uh, you're supposed to have a duty of care, making sure vulnerable people are safe. The duty to pass on the information if concerned about abuse or neglect, and you have a duty to treat all of your passengers with dignity and respect whistleblowing other drivers um, and other services and club staff you're supposed to whistleblow you're supposed to tell them why because criminals are using taxis to get away with crime that's what the police have found and without your help they're gonna carry on doing it and if you don't report it the police don't know they can't do anything it's your responsibility so we need to be aware that some people suffer harm as a result of abuse by others. And when this is the case, we have a duty to take action. Safeguarding is everybody's business. And that keeps coming up on your exams. Uh, whose business is safeguarding? The answer is everybody's business. What are the different types of abuses? There is physical abuse such as uh, uh, you know attacking someone there is sexual abuse such as hurting someone sexually there is psychological and emotional abuse such as telling somebody that they're not good enough even telling yourself that you're not good enough is a form of psychological abuse on yourself and you should be aware of it and stop it because it can lead to other things later on in life so psychological and emotional abuse can happen to yourself you should make sure that you, you stay positive. Uh, and if you see someone in your taxi wagging a finger at another person saying, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, write it down, report it. That's a form of abuse. Organizational abuse. Having a passenger get in your car, you drive them to somewhere else, they get out of your car, they step into another car or another taxi and drive away. They are being organized, they are being trafficked. They could be a person who's uh, just come to the UK and their passport's been taken off them, they're being trafficked around. Uh, cleaners, uh, in-house cleaners, um, sexual sex workers. You must recognize this. Modern slavery, again, they've just arrived to the UK for a better life and their passport has been taken away from them and now they can't leave. Financial or material. Uh, financial, um, Financial is, let's say, uh, the money is not in their hands, it's in someone else's hands, and that money is being uh, used only when needed to. Or, or, for example, two people sit in your car, one person is very well dressed, they could be wearing a suit, and another person is very dirty and filthy. Uh, that that should be alarm bells as well. Discrimination. Discriminatory abuse is where you discriminate them because they're wearing a hijab. Their the skin is white or brown. They are a girl. They are a boy. They wear glasses. They have tattoos or studs. They are different. Neglect and acts of omission. So if one person is complaining that they're hungry or that they have a pain or that they're crying and then the other person's not listening to them, report it because that could be a deeper issue that you could uncover and help the child or the person or the vulnerable adult with. Domestic violence, again, we just looked at that. When someone sits in your car and the man or the woman hits the man or the woman, uh, that's a domestic abuse uh, and you need to report that. Uh, so what things would make you concerned under each of these headings? You should have a quick read of them, pause the video if you need, and what would make you concerned about any of these things? Uh, recognizing indicators of concern. So uh, for children under the age of 18, relationships with older males or females, concern that a young person is sexually active, breaking away from family, friends or professionals, or not attending school. 
uh, or going missing from home or experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Uh, if you know a child is meant to be in school but instead they're in your taxi, report it. If a child brings loads of alcohol into your car, report it. If you smell drugs or you see drugs in your car, report it. Uh, if they're not listening to friends and family and they're just going off and doing their thing and you know, you know they should be at school, report it. Um, yes. So children with physical injuries if a child gets in your car and they've got a bruise on their arm report it if they're secretive and they don't want to talk report it report it to the police or mash involved in offending behavior so they're swearing they're being racially abusive to you um, they may just be crying out for help and you need to report it they could they could investigate it and see there's something deeper down unexplained mobile phone or credit so these kids have two phones or three phones report that um, accepting lifts in different cars like we just said you drop a child off in a field and they get out of the car and they go into another car and they drive away sending and receiving inappropriate images so if you know that they're getting inappropriate images report that too spending increasing time on social media networks um, if you know that they're spending a lot of time um, and they're communicating with other people and you hear the conversation you can report that too that would be very helpful how are these young people targeted? They are vulnerable. They are befriended by the offender. There is a grooming process uh, where they're given food, sweets, money. There's blackmail and threats. If you tell your parents, I'm going to come and find you. Isolation from support. Don't listen to your mom and dad. Don't listen to your friends. Listen to me. I'll look after you. That's how they get these kids. And you need to be very, very aware of it. Um, who are the offenders? They're individuals who control adult sex workers, uh, drug dealers with links to violent crimes, uh, groups of males who exploit for their own sexual gratification, males who pass young people on to others for sex, uh, female offenders, other young people. These are big things that you need to be concerned with and as a professional driver, you've got to know who the, what, what's going on. Because if they get in your taxi once, they're probably going to do it two or three times and you're going to see a pattern. Now let's talk about recognizing indicators of concern for adults of 18 years or over. Um, so what kind of adults are we talking about here? We're talking about disabled adults, um, uh, uh, mentally, uh, some, some, some adults who may have uh, mental illnesses such as Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, um, and, and, and let's understand how they could be abused. So they could be bullied. So if you see them and you know that they have maybe a mental illness and they're being bullied, report it. Having decisions made for them all the time. So if all the decisions are made for them, there may, there may be some deeper lying issues there. Please report that too. Uh, their preferences are being ignored. So they say, I don't want to do this today. And the other person says, you have to do it. You will do it. Enough is enough. Report it because their preferences are not being heard. Uh, being subject to verbal abuses and put down. So telling them you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, that's, that's bad. Report that. Physical injuries, again bruises. Being poorly dressed and unclean. Now, what if a passenger gets in your car and they're not wearing any shoes? Should you report it? Yes. What if a passenger gets in your car and it's freezing outside and they're wearing a t-shirt? Should you report it? Yes. What if a passenger gets in your car and the other passenger is very well dressed and that passenger is very dirty? Should you report it? Definitely yes. Again, these are indicators of concern that you need to know about. Struggling to look after themselves. So if a, so if a passenger gets in your car and it, they, they, they don't have personal hygiene, very good personal hygiene, sorry, um, or, or, or they, their clothes are dirty, so you've got to recognize these things and, and report it to, to the master or the police. They'll bring the relevant agencies to help that person. What is sexual assault? Um, sexual assault is when a person intentionally sexually touches another person without reasonable belief that they consented. Touching covers all the physical contact, whether with a part of the body or anything else, or through the clothing. It is unconsensual touching. That's sexual, um, sexual assault. Um, what is sexual exploitation? Uh, young people receiving something like money, food, to anything, in return for engaging in sexual activities. Offenders have power over victims due to their age, gender, 
intellect, physical strength and or economic or other resources. So let's say an older man with a younger girl, they can kind of, you know, show um, they've got money, they've got status, they've got things in order to... Um, in order to uh, make that person their victim, sexualize them, um, or even through physical strength in the worst case scenarios. Violence, coercion, and intimidation are common. So what does coercion mean? Coercion means to make them do something they don't want to do. Intimidation, telling them I'm going to make you do this. Um, violence, uh, being violent towards them to get them to do what they want to do. Boys and young men can be victims as well as girls and young women. What's being done to try and stop this? Well, professionals and partners are being trained to spot signs of exploitation. So this video is exactly that. We are teaching you as professionals and, uh, and partners uh, in this uh, to know what, what you need to be aware of. You need to look at this and you need to report it. Young people are being warned as well. So not only are you being told, but young people are being told there's education programs for young people. Concerns referred to the police or social care are fully investigated. Information is passed to the police to help disrupt activities and prosecute offenders. So working with the police is very important to stop these crimes from happening. So how could this affect you? Let's say you're learning to be a taxi driver or you are a taxi driver or you're going for an exam that rec that requires you answering all these questions. Well, it's fantastic that you have to do this exam because you should show concern for young people in your vehicle. You should show concern about the locations and the venues at which you drop off these young people. Are you dropping them off at pubs with their friends? Or are you dropping them off at hotels with strangers? Are you dropping them off at their family home? Or are you dropping them off in the countryside with a random stranger's home? Are you dropping them off uh, in the city centre? Or are you dropping them off randomly in a field somewhere and they're walking into the dark? Concerns about adults paying for young people's taxi fares let's say let's go back to one of the scenarios where you drop a passenger off and they get out they go to the door and a man comes out and he pays he throws the money in the car and then walks back in and closes the door report that why because this could be a case where he's paying for the taxi fare he thinks he's finished uh, uh, and that's the end of the story but no you as a fully trained professional will know that this is a concern this is a problem uh, there could be an issue here. I'm going to report it. We'll see what happens. Uh, concerns about young person's conversations in your vehicle. So if you overhear a discussion concerning these things about child sexual exploitation, CSE, or um, uh, adult uh, exploitations, um, it's your responsibility to safeguard them, to protect them. Uh, what could you do to help? Please be aware of all the risks we've just discussed. Beware of young people and adults that you think are that may be at risk. Beware of the addresses you are taking these young people and adults to and pass on any information concerns that you may have. What do you do if you're concerned about a vulnerable passenger? Phone 999. Uh, uh, if you're concerned about a child, contact Children and Families Direct. Uh, uh, if you're concerned about an adult, contact the Health and Care Point. There is MASH, the Multiple Agency Safeguarding Hub, which is for children. And why do they ask you to contact MASH if it's to do with a child instead of the police? Because MASH can do things a lot faster than the police. Uh, MASH will get to every uh, child protection agency very quickly if it's to do with a child. The police may take a little bit more time. And when it comes to these issues, maybe minutes or you know, half an hour or an hour could be the difference between, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a really bad situation and, and saving somebody. So, protecting yourself and others, check, so how can you do this as a taxi driver? At the point of picking up the passenger, check if there's any vulnerability issues. For example, you pick up a passenger, uh, do they have a chaperone with them? Is there a guardian with them? Are you carrying a five, to five six, seven year old child uh, by themselves? There's a problem there. Uh, ask the person booking if an escort or, or for the vulnerable passenger is required or if they're providing one. So if you're picking up a disabled passenger, uh, do you need a, 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 a chaperone or, a, or an adult? 
Uh, let your control know or keep a record of the time you picked up the vulnerable passenger and the time and the place of which you dropped them off. So that means call at the base, I've now picked up the vulnerable passenger, thank you very much, put it down, drive to your destination, I'm now dropping off the vulnerable passenger and the time is um, half past four. Okay? If you refuse to take a passenger, inform someone else so that they... so that you can uh so that they can deal with them as well uh in a, in a different way so let's say you say i don't want to uh, pick up this passenger because they don't have a chaperone make arrangements for that person don't just leave them there that's bad that's against the equalities act you can see that in the other video that we've just made good safeguarding practice is your responsibility and so it really just means get a pen get a notepad write it down record the incident be professional. Try not to be overly friendly or talk about personal or intimate issues and don't exchange personal contact information such as passengers' telephone numbers or Facebook addresses and avoid swearing or aggressive behavior. Do not touch the passengers. You're a professional. Don't touch them. Never accept an offer of a sexual favor instead of a payment. Wear a conspicuous position your driver's badge. Yeah? Um, uh, so uh, everyone can see it, the council and that's the one that's issued by the council explain to passengers if you're using a centralized locking system don't just put it on without explanation so you know in normal uh, cars when you're driving after you get up a bit of speed the the doors lock sometimes passengers may feel a bit uneasy about the doors locking so you can just say to them hi yeah um, excuse me yeah the the doors have just locked if you want me to unlock the doors just let me know uh, they may feel a bit more comfortable not like boxed in so again good safeguarding practice do not assume that your passenger wants help please ask always ask ask the lady excuse me uh, your husband or your partner's just hit you in um, do you need help and they may say yes please then you report it or no you still report it but you know you don't you don't get involved and you shouldn't get involved because that person could pull a weapon out they could get very angry with you it's not your responsibility because you're not trained to stop that person the police are so as quickly as possible get involved with the police and get them to get to get involved uh, and then you carry on with your work if you're a taxi driver and you're working, you don't want to lose money, but you don't want to let that go. Ask before making a journey shorter by going off the main roads uh, and using isolated country roads. Explain and give the passenger uh, a choice of the route. Never set off with a passenger without a specific destination address. So, you know, in the Hollywood films, they just say, follow that car or... Uh, you know, keep just drive. And uh, yeah, that doesn't work in outside of Hollywood because uh, in the UK, you are not allowed to go anywhere without a destination. So if someone gets in your car and acts really Hollywood or Bollywood, you just tell them, listen, relax, just tell me where to go, give me a destination, because you can't go without. Um, never double up on a booking, even if the passengers are traveling in a similar direction, they may, po they may pose a threat or risk to the other passengers. So doubling up on a booking means that if you're going to a destination and you pick up one passenger and you see another passenger on the way that you pick them up as well, they're two strangers in the car and you're driving. That is uh, that is bad, that's difficult. Because uh, it's it's not good to have strangers in the car and you, and you even though you're driving to town and they both want to go to town, go to town, drop one passenger off, come back, pick up the others and then go back. If you think a passenger is afraid, offer to ring ahead and tell them that you have a passenger named uh, whoever the passenger is, Susan, Margaret, um, Nassim, and, and, and give the address and the approximate time of the arrival. This reassures the person uh, that, uh, that they are uh, safe and someone is monitoring the trip. So you call the base and say, I'm just picking up the passenger and I'm dropping them off at the base. As with all professionals, if you're concerned about another driver's conduct, uh, report uh, the concerns to the police or your base or to the council uh, or to MASH if you're concerned about someone else. And organizations should have a lead member of staff for safeguarding uh, that you can contact and say, hey, I have an issue with safeguarding, could you please report it? Finally, always keep a record, either in your taxi cab, your private hire cab or, um, or your taxi, uh, of any incidents and situations, use a notepad and pen uh, and a description of what's happened, uh, what you did.
to keep yourself and your passengers safe. Always keep a notepad and pen. Remember, you, we uh, need to be aware that some people suffer from harm as a result of the abuse of others. That is the reality of life. It is your responsibility uh, to safeguard them. And when this is the case, uh, we we must we must take action. Uh, and safeguarding is everybody's business. So please be aware of the indicators of risk. Go back in this video if there's anything you don't understand. Get in touch with us on WhatsApp if you do need to to, to uh, speak more about it. Um, and remember, Fast Trackers, if you need more help, get in touch with us. We'll be able to help you. So, Fast Trackers, in closing, I, we just want to say safeguarding is everybody's um, responsibility. And as a professional taxi driver, your responsibility is to make sure that you that you look after your passengers in your car. If there's anything in this video that you don't understand, please go back in the video and go through it. Or you can get in touch with us. You can WhatsApp us in the description below. And we're very, very happy to help you. So Fast Trackers, we look forward to seeing you in your next class. Good luck in your test. Good luck in your exam. And good luck in being a taxi driver. We look forward to seeing you again. My name is Rahul Ghazni, Director of Fast Track Training. Have a wonderful day guys.